Uh, Petteri Talas is, uh, uh, since uh, 2016, uh, Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, and before going to Geneva, uh, he led the Finnish Meteorological Institute, and he developed it not only to a leading medium-sized weather, climate, and marine services institution, but also to a science institution. He has a lot of high-profile uh, positions of, of, of trust. And let me just uh, note, for instance, uh, uh, he has coordinated scientific and technological projects uh, uh, for and with and funded by the European Union, the European uh, Space Agency, NASA, and so on. Uh, his research, uh, has focused on air pollutants, ozone, climate, and satellite technologies. So, uh, Petteri, please, the floor is yours, and Petteri Talas is going to talk about climate change, the global perspective. Please. Thank you, Maria. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. So, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks for the invitation, and I'm happy to see many, very many common faces here, but I'm also happy to see that there are some new faces from my present home country, Switzerland, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and it's a pleasure to, to talk to you about uh, climate change. This is my third uh, climate presentation today. I was uh, in the morning uh, giving a talk to Metzebotnia uh, in, in Espo, and, um, and, and uh, I was just coming from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where I was meeting the directors of, of, of the ministry, they were, also, they were also very interested in the climate, climate issues. So uh, at the moment I'm leading uh, a World Meteorological Organization, which is in, in Geneva, and, and uh, we are having very fancy uh, headquarters. They are donated by the Swiss uh, government. Uh, there was a competition between Swiss and German governments where to place the new headquarters of WMO, and uh, Switzerland was the, was the winner. And, and we are in charge of the global weather observing system consisting of satellite, the ground-based measurements, uh, balloon soundings, aircraft, and, uh, and vessel measurements, and, um, and that's the backbone of uh, weather forecasting. So without that system, one, one couldn't uh, run weather forecasting. And, and our work is very much done by our, our members. We have 200,000 experts at the member countries, and. Uh, and, and it's both the meteorological services uh, and, and also academia, and, and we are also in the process to engage the private sector in our, our work. We are hosting the IPCC Secretariat, uh, they are my staff, and uh, we were also contributing to the establishment of UNFCCC. And at the moment, I'm also very much uh, advising Secretary General Guterres on climate uh, matters. We will release a status of climate report in New York uh, next Friday, together with him, for example. And, and these are our duties. We are also very much dealing with the climate, uh, climate research and, and the climate uh, observations. Uh, we, are, we are dealing with operational services and, and, and this earth, earth system observation standard setting and also technology. That's, that's one of our duties. And then we have about 100 members who don't have proper expertise and, 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 and we, have also, we are also dealing with capacity development when it comes to, comes to them. We were just ranked as number three when it comes to innovativeness of uh, UN agencies, and uh, so we are very proud of that. And uh, our resources are still a little bit limited. We could be a little bit higher if, uh, for example, the Swiss government would allocate more money for, for us in the future. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what's happening at WMO at the moment, we are carrying out the major, major reform of WMO activities and um, and, and, and demand for our expertise is growing, and we have been there's a high request for for climate and, and disaster expertise, and uh, and also the major fi finance institutions, uh, World Bank and Green Climate Fund and European Commission, they are our, our partners, and we were winning a, a prize from Hong Kong uh, last October, and and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and there was also the. German energy vendor professor uh, Professor Fell was one of the winners, and we were having interesting discussions on the climate climate matters also with uh, with him. This is from the uh, World Economic Forum from uh, from Davos. Uh, they are every every year estimating what are the biggest uh, risks for global economy on annual basis, and and for three years in line extreme weather events, uh, failure of climate change mitigation, adaptation, and uh, natural disasters. They have been 
very high on the agenda. They are very likely and they are very high impact uh, issues. So this is uh, this is the status of uh, of a statement by the economic community. And Finland is very active in in this field as well. We have, uh, as Mar Maria said, we have uh, advanced med service, but we have all, we are also very science oriented, and we have. Uh, Finnish Met Institute, Helsinki University and University of Eastern Finland, they are, they are key players here. And, and, and we have also Vaisala company, which is producing not the cheapest, but perhaps the best meteorological instruments in the world. That's the biggest uh, meteorological uh, instrument uh, manufacturing corporation in the, in the world. Few words about the natural disasters. We have seen an increase in the amount of uh, natural disasters, and here we have uh, major big uh, disasters like uh, big hurricanes, typhoons, uh, cyclones, uh, major heat waves, or major flooding, flooding events, and, and you can see a steady increase. And, uh, and, uh, and especially we have seen an increase in the amount of uh, flooding events. We have more humidity in the, in, in the atmosphere nowadays, and, and we have also seen an increase in the storm events and, and we have started seeing growing amount of uh, category four and f five uh, hurricanes and, and typhoons and also cyclones. And there's a slight increase in the amount of uh, heat waves and, and, and droughts as well. And during the past 10 years uh, we have seen uh, 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 that uh, more than 90 percent of the disasters that we have observed worldwide they have been related to weather and, and again Flooding is, is here number one, and, and storms uh, number two, and thereafter we have earthquakes. Uh, and about half of the world population during the past uh, 10 years have been exposed to major, major natural disaster. And, and flooding is, is also here number one, and uh, drought is number two. And, and drought has been hitting especially countries like uh, regions like Africa, Australia, and, and some parts of uh, of USA and, um, and Mexico. And in Finland, uh, uh, this 2010 heat wave was one of those uh, major disasters. Uh, we got uh, some 500 excess deaths uh, that July, and in Russia there were 50,000 excess uh, deaths uh, related to heat wave and uh, also poor air quality, which was related to forest fires and, and peat fires. If you look at the, the disasters uh, for the past uh, decades, this is from the 50s, uh, some statistics, how, how much we have seen casualties related to disasters. You can see a positive uh, trend uh, there. We used to have lots of uh, casualties in the, in the 50s and, and 60s, 70s, and more recently, not so much. And that's because of uh, improved early warning services. But what is fairly striking here is that the economic losses have been Dramatic, dramatically growing, and uh, and we have seen threefold increase in the, in the economic losses related to the disasters that I was just uh, just mentioning, and 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 this trend is uh, supposed to continue if we fail in, in climate uh, mitigation. And if you look at the world map, uh, which uh, parts of the world are most sensitive to these uh, disasters? Uh, you can see red color, which indicates that they are, they are exposed to disasters and, and they are uh, least uh, prepared to, to face uh, the consequences of disasters. And you can see Africa as a very reddish uh, uh, continent, and, and also there, is, there are red colors in southern parts of, uh, of Asia. And I, I will come back to the Africa, Africa case. And also in Latin America, uh, there's more uh, yellow and, and red color than in uh, other continents. And if you look at the disasters for the past 10 years, uh, here are the most expensive ones, and uh, most of them are related to the uh, hurricanes in, in, in Caribbean. And we have now uh, warmer temperatures in the oceans, which is giving more energy for the, for the tropical storms, and we have also more humidity in the in the atmosphere, and, and some of these uh, losses are related also to flooding. So it's not only the wind speed which is the problem, but it's also also flooding. And so far, the most expensive one has been Hurricane Katrina. And I had a chance to visit the, the city a couple of months after the disaster, and it was quite quite impressive. And there are also a couple of flooding flooding cases here. But if we divide uh, these uh, these statistics with the size of the economy. You can see that uh, these Caribbean islands, they have been most vulnerable and uh, they have been 
GDP losses uh, up to 800 percent at Saint Martin and um, at uh, at uh, uh, Dominica there was uh, 2017 250 percent loss and two years before there was 90 percent loss and, 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 and this is fairly striking for for those those countries and also Puerto Rico which is uh, which is mentioned here that they lost about uh, about 70 percent of their their GDP in, in, in one day and there were lots of uh, casualties afterward their their health system broke down and and, uh, and it was causing long-term problems for, for for them okay this is interesting that the computer is showing showing this but here it's uh, this is the graph showing what has happened to the temperature during the past 150 years and we have seen one degree warming so far and, uh, and, and this cannot be explained without uh, human impact. These natural uh, parameters, uh, uh, solar activity, uh, earth, uh, earth uh, parameter when it comes to suns, sun geometry and, uh, and, uh, and, and the volcanic ac activities do, do not explain this. So we can not explain it without, without human, human impact. Here is a picture from the recent IPCC report that was published uh, last uh, October showing where we have seen uh, the major warming so far and you can see that the Arctic area which is very close to Finland uh, actually Finland is exposed to the Arctic uh, Arctic uh, changes very much we have seen double numbers as compared to the global global average we have seen more than two degrees warming here in Finland and uh, and that's the case also in the in the Arctic and, and the winter season has been facing even even higher higher numbers other region that has been facing uh, quite the big changes uh, is the mediterranean region especially in in, in summer time and and we have uh, stored more than 90 percent of the extra heat to the oceans and they have been warming warming about half degree so far and uh, and there's also an anomaly in the warming uh, south of uh, greenland and uh, and iceland and that's related to the slowing down of the so-called Gulf Stream. So we have seen also changes in the in the in the ocean, ocean currents. We have natural variability called La Nina, uh, El Nino vari variability, which is uh, having impacts on the on the uh, ocean temperatures in the Pacific. And uh, 2016, which was the warmest year so far, was boosted by fairly strong El Nino. But La Nina is the opposite uh, thing, and, and uh, 2018 was the warmest uh, La Nina year uh, ever, ever recorded. You can see other years there, and, and this, was, uh, this was the warmest uh, La Nina year, which is demonstrating that the warming still continues. Sea level rise, we have seen uh, 26 centimeters uh, sea level rise so far, and, uh, and, and there are various components behind this uh, first thermal expansion of the, of the warmer water then we have seen melting of the of the glaciers and especially uh, the melting of greenland uh, uh, glacier has been has, has had, a, had a major impact and, and 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 that speed has tripled during the past uh, 10 years and, and more recently also the antarctic uh, sea ice has started uh, melting okay this is not uh, visible either in, on this computer but uh, this uh, here it was a graph showing that we have uh, lost uh, practically all of the so-called multi-year ice from the Arctic and, and we have melted 75 percent of the sea ice mass of the of the Arctic so far and uh, and, and there's also uh, interest economic interest when it comes to Arctic and uh, and we expect that by 2040 uh, the whole Arctic would be would be ice free and, and it would be there would be a chance to use the shipping routes across the North Pole in the coming 20 years and the uh, problem will be that we will not have ice free conditions year round and uh, sometimes there's a risk for severe packed ice uh, conditions and also the, uh, the Arctic sea routes they are more shallow than the, the southern ones so we can use not, not use the biggest uh, container ships uh, there but uh, for sure this is going to be interesting for the for, for the countries and uh, for example China uh, Japan South Korea and Singapore are already having having plans for for that and, and there are there's certain friction between uh, them and uh, and for example Russia which would like to charge for the 
use of the Arctic uh, shipping routes. In uh, uh, USA, they, are, they especially they talk about uh, global warming, and, and that's a little bit the misleading term because the biggest impacts of uh, climate change they, so far they are related to changes in rainfall patterns. And here is an estimation what has uh, measurement what has happened uh, during the recent uh, decades as compared to the uh, case uh, early part of uh, last uh, century. And you can see brownish colors and yellow colors and, and those are areas which have already been getting drier and especially Africa is, 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 is a continent where we have seen a major change taking place and also in southern parts of uh, uh, India, uh, Asia and also the Him Himalayan region they are getting drier and, and some parts of uh, Amazonian rainforest they are also getting, getting drier and that may be an interesting topic for our previous uh, speaker. At the high northern latitudes, we have seen an increase of the, of the rainfall amounts. We already saw some uh, carbon dioxide uh, curves, and, and here are three main uh, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane and uh, nitrous uh, oxide, and, uh, and, and we have seen an increase in the concentrations of all of those. And so far, since uh, three industrial times, we have seen about 150 percent increase of carbon dioxide uh, concentration, about 260 percent increase of methane concentration and 120 percent increase in nitrous oxide. And out of these, uh, carbon dioxide is clearly the most important one. It has contributed uh, to two thirds of the warming so far and its special feature is that its lifetime is, uh, is very long. So, so once you emit more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, it takes very long time to to remove it there. Uh, methane is also a very effective greenhouse gas. It has uh, contributed about 17 percent of the warming so far, but its lifetime is only 12 years. So that's, that's a problem that be, can be solved uh, uh, in a very different time scale as compared to this one. And uh, based on this, uh, President Obama said uh, at his last uh, United Nations speech that uh, we are the first generation to know about this problem and we are also the last generation to solve it. So if we, if we don't do anything, we will live with this problem for a fairly, fairly long time. And which countries are behind uh, the carbon dioxide increase? Uh, here are some emission estimates for, for various parts of the world. And you can see that the classically the developed world has been a major player, but uh, during the past uh, uh, 15 years, uh, China has become number one. But we have seen also fairly a dramatic growth in the emissions of uh, non-OECD countries. So this is demonstrating that uh, if we want to mitigate climate change, it's not uh, a challenge for, for, the, for the developed countries or China, but it's a, it's a, global, it's a global challenge. And a few words about the carbon budget. Uh, we just heard uh, one component uh, discussed this uh, intake to the forests. And um, about 90 percent of the of the increase of carbon dioxide, it's it's related to uh, to use of fossil fossil energy, and uh, about uh, 10 percent is related to uh, deforestation, especially in in, in 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 tropical zones in countries like Brazil and Indonesia. These uh, uh, boreal forests are behaving different way. They are uh, they are renewing, but. Uh, but, but the tropical case is, is very different. I'm sure that the previous speaker knows more about, about that. And uh, about one quarter of the, of the uh, carbon dioxide that we emit to the atmosphere, they are taken by oceans, uh, one third uh, by, by growing forests, and, and about half of that uh, remains in the atmosphere. And we have to understand and also to, to be able to measure this uh, budget in the proper way to, to, to understand what's, what's really happening. And we have seen already uh, changes in the chemical composition of the, of the seawater because uh, oceans are one of the sink of, uh, of carbon dioxide. And, uh, and once we emit more carbon dioxide to the oceans, uh, the seawater gets uh, more acid. And, and there's an estimation that uh, already today the, uh, the ocean seawater is, uh, uh, is, is uh, most acid uh, in 25 million years, which is a fairly high number. And, and uh, this uh, intake is, uh, is strongest in the cold areas, and you can see that in the Arctic uh, there's more uh, bluish, and, and also close to Antarctica there's also more, 
bluish color. And once, uh, once we warm the oceans, uh, this uh, sink becomes weaker. Uh, this is from the most recent IPCC report that was published in October. And what is, how, how does the future look like? And, uh, and, and one of the messages from, from this 1.5 degree report was uh, this curve, that it's still theoretically possible to reach uh, 1.5 degrees uh, warming, which was the lower limit of, uh, of Paris uh, Agreement. But that would mean that we should uh, turn our emissions to a rapid uh, drop, uh, uh, in, in coming five years and, and we should uh, get uh, carbon free by 2050s. And if we would like to reach the upper limit of Paris Agreement, then we would have some 15 years time to, to turn our emissions to uh, uh, dropping path and, uh, and be carbon free around 2070s. And if we continue emitting as we have been doing so far, then we, there's, a, uh, there's a chance to risk, uh, reach uh, three to five degrees warming by the end of this, this century. And if we compare the global uh, changes with, uh, with, uh, with uh, this is the global one for two degree warming and, uh, and, and business as usual scenario. Here is uh, annual mean for Arctic. Uh, so if we would reach uh, two degrees uh, globally, it would mean something like five degrees uh, into Arctic and it would mean about seven degrees in the Arctic uh, winter. So anyhow, we are going to face uh, uh, larger change uh, here at high northern, northern latitudes. And if we don't do anything, then we could reach uh, 10 degrees uh, uh, in the Arctic and uh, in the winter time uh, numbers exceeding 12 degrees. Uh, so that's, uh, that would be a fairly dramatic change also for the ecosystems here. And there were some recent estimates of sea level rise. So far it has been this 26 centimeters and, uh, and, and the most recent estimates uh, of sea level rise uh, have been higher than the previous ones. And here is the range of, uh, range of uh, sea level rise uh, estimates and, uh, and the conservative estimate is between half, half meter and one meter by the end of this uh, century. But if we are able to start melting the Antarctic sea ice in a ma massive way, then we could uh, reach uh, values exceeding two meters uh, by the end of this century. This is one of the areas where we have uh, fairly big uncertainty at the moment. WMO is publishing on an annual basis uh, status of uh, climate uh, reports and, and we are doing it together with other UN, UN players and, uh, and IMF uh, was contributing to our last year's report uh, estimating what has been the impact of current one degree warming on global GDP so far. And, um, and uh, you can see red colors in Southern Hemisphere and in the tropical zone and, um, and, and green color in the, at the high northern latitudes. So the high northern latitudes have already gained. We need less uh, uh, warming, uh, heating, heating energy and, and, uh, and uh, agricultural season has been getting longer and, and also the forest growth has uh, increased, whereas in the Southern Hemisphere we have uh, especially drought-related uh, problems as more prevailing ones. And uh, this is to me the main concern related to climate change. What's going to happen to the global uh, agricultural production? And uh, this is an estimate what would happen if we would reach uh, three, three degrees uh, warming, what would happen to the crop uh, crop yields and, and, and these red colors indicate negative change and, uh, and green colors positive change. And only few parts of the world would uh, benefit. And those areas are not uh, most suitable for, for, for farming. So we would uh, suffer from lack of uh, food. And that's, that's to me the main, main concern related to, to climate change. And you can again see, uh, for example, Africa large parts of uh, Southern Asia and, and, and uh, both Americas uh, as fairly, fairly reddish. And heat stress uh, for one degrees case, uh, two degrees case and uh, four degrees case. And again, in four degrees case, we would have about similar uh, pic pic picture as previous one, but this is heat stress uh, for the human human, which would have impacts on human, human health. And there's an estimate what 
uh, how this uh, sea level rise uh, together with the storm surges would have an impact on, 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 on various uh, places in the world. And uh, most vulnerable areas are, are the big countries in Asia, China, India, uh, Vietnam, uh, Philippines, uh, Bangladesh, uh, uh, Pakistan. But there are also individual big cities on coastal zones which are, which are vulnerable. And, and we have already seen, for example, the impacts of uh, Hurricane Sandy on, on New York, where, where southern Manhattan was, uh, uh, was, uh, was having blackout for, for a week. And finally, a couple of uh, uh, pictures uh, showing that uh, what are the options for the future. So if we would uh, use all of the fossil fuel resources that we know, we would uh, reach uh, 2000 ppm of uh, carbon dioxide, which is five times the current uh, concentration. And, and then we would reach a planet which would be eight degrees warmer for, for, for thousands of, uh, of years. And uh, the sea level rise, uh, which would be uh, about one meter per a century at least uh, for again uh, for, for, for hundreds or even thousands of years. We have potential in Greenland uh, to, to have a sea, seven meters sea level rise and, uh, and about more than 50 meters uh, if we ma would melt the whole Antarctic uh, glacier. And there was a recent uh, U.S. Uh, study showing what, what, uh, what, ma what may have happened in the past uh, when we last time exceeded 400 ppm, which is the current, uh, current level. And, uh, and, and it was, there's, there's an estimate that that happened uh, 3 million years ago. And, and then there was an estimate that the, sea, uh, the temperature was about 2 to 4 degrees warmer than today. And, and the sea level was uh, 10 to 30 meters higher than today. So already this current uh, concentration may be a risky risky level. And uh, then it's a question how to solve this problem. So this is uh, the problem today that we are producing 85% of our energy based on fossil, fossil sources of energy, coal, oil and, and gas, and, um, and, and only 15% only, only based on nuclear, hydro and, and renewables. And to be successful in climate mitigation, we should revert those uh, 15 to 85 numbers in the coming decades uh, so that we would produce uh, practically all of the energy based on, on the latter, latter ones. And so far, uh, the consumption of uh, oil and gas, uh, they are still, still growing. There has been a short, uh, slight dip in the consumption of coal. And if you look at the carbon dioxide emissions, uh, 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 also last year we, we saw an increase of the emissions and this plateau that we, we used to have uh, some years ago, it's, it's, it's gone and about uh, we have seen about three degree uh, increase of the of the emissions uh, last year, and uh, and uh, besides uh, uh, climate change, we have also challenges related to uh, uh, to poor air quality and, and especially the big uh, Asian economies, India and China and, and neighboring countries, they are suffering because of uh, of that, and, uh, and and for them it's attractive to improve the air quality and at the same time they can go to more carbon free solutions like electric vehicles and, uh, and, and non fossil sources of energy. And uh, from the UN perspective, uh, 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 climate change is seen also as, as a threat when it comes to sustainable development goals. Many of those are related to climate change disasters and, uh, and water availability. That's very, very well understood that uh, this, this may in the long run be a major development challenge as well. And finally, a few words about the global, global politics, uh, what are the uh, security policy perspectives of, uh, of climate uh, change. First, uh, uh, this agriculture issue that I was already mentioning, that's, uh, that's one of the challenges in Africa, but also in other parts of the world and in, in Europe, Mediterranean region is, is vulnerable. And the world economy, it's much, it would be much cheaper to mitigate climate change than to live with the consequences of, uh, of that. And that's even, even the case in USA. There was a recent uh, science report from, from their, their side. This uh, conversion of the energy system, it's not very easy for some countries. And, uh, and Russia is not so eager to mitigate. And, and it's, it's, it's also the case in Arabic countries. Uh, 
for example, when this recent IPCC report was uh, published, uh, some of the Arabic countries led by Saudi Arabia, they were against, uh, against the whole, whole, whole report. And Africa as a con continent is most vulnerable. It's, uh, it's a challenge for the economy, employment and food security. And, and, and the, the potential for refugees, it's clearly growing, keeping in mind that also the, the amount of uh, population is, 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 is growing there. In Europe, uh, uh, the Mediterranean countries are, are, are vulnerable and, and there's a potential for bigger amounts of uh, immigration. And, and we have seen already impacts of, uh, of, uh, of immigration on, on, human, uh, on, on, on European uh, politi policies and also for, for European, U U European Union. And for Finland, uh, what's going to happen in Russia? There was a recent report uh, by the ministries for defense and uh, foreign affairs talking about uh, that issue and, and that's that's one of the matters to be considered what's going to happen to the European Union and, and these refugee challenges and, and, and also this uh, this forest uh, forest economy which is a, an important part of our our economy there's lots of discussion on on carbon sinks and uh, and with the carbon sink issue we cannot uh, solve the problem the main ma main solution is is to get rid of uh, fossil energy and, and globally to, to tackle also population growth. Those are the key issues. This uh, strengthening of the sinks, uh, that's not going to be, be the final solution of this, this problem. So thanks for your attention. And, uh, and uh, Maria said that we are going to talk about the issues from now on. Thanks for the invitation, Mark.